So one thing about Bill as a young boy is uh, very early. He demonstrated this really insatiable curiosity about things. He became uh, a voracious reader. He would bring a book to a Husky game. I mean, how can you not sit there and be fully engaged in a Husky football game? I just didn't understand that. We knew he was smart, he was academically gifted, but we didn't have any impression that there was something world-class going on in our living room necessarily. My eighth grade year, they got a terminal that was connected over a phone line to a GE time train computer. And Paul Allen, who was two years ahead of me, was one of the people who was most curious about it. Before you knew it, there was just a core group of about a dozen of us that would spend every spare moment between classes or if we had a spare period in this room just learning like little sponges everything we could about programming. He snuck out of the house to go use computer time that wasn't necessarily his to use and I was fully aware of all of his escapades in and out of the house but never reported on any of those. They'd always have some secret window they left unlocked and here then they get back in this room and start knocking around with this thing for uh, who knows how long. Back in college, Bill was really very intense about the things that he was interested in. Uh, that included some of his classes, uh, especially the math classes, uh, independent studies in computer science, uh, and he was very intense about games. He was very intense about pinball. He was very intense about playing uh, Pong and Breakout, and uh, most of all, he was very intense about playing poker. It's a cold Boston winter, and we're at Harvard Square, where there's this magazine store. I saw the Altair in, um, in Cambridge, at, in Harvard Square in Cambridge, and show Bill the magazine, and I said, we, we should do basic for this. Paul says, look, this is happening without us. You know, we're going to miss it. Somebody else is going to do the cool software. And so we hunker down and write a basic interpreter for this 8080 chip. Then we were calling up this company with the kit computer and saying, we have a basic. And uh, they say, oh, yeah, sure. And so Paul flew to Albuquerque. Paul loaded the basic in, and amazingly it worked. I mean, the MITS people were amazed, and Paul was amazed, because there were so many things that could have gone wrong. I'm just going, oh, my gosh, I can't believe all this code, because I'm imagining in my head all the code that Bill and I had written over the previous two and a half months. It was all, it was all working. So that that they became our first customer, and that's when Microsoft really got started. Was there in Albuquerque, New Mexico? This one morning, in comes this kid. Hair's all messed up. He has jeans and sneakers, and he's walking by my desk and says, "Hi." Then he goes to the computers and he's typing and looks like he owns the place. He says, well, he does. He's your boss. I said, that's the president? How old is he? <laughs> and I thought, oh my God, I'm working for a bunch of kids here. Ohio Scientific Billings, Kermemco, MSI, people don't remember these names, but like the start of any in industry, there was just a flourishing of lots and lots of companies, 90% of which went out of business, but we got to do the basic for all those machines. And so it was a very exciting time period where I was kind of traveling and doing the, the business stuff as well as writing uh, a lot of code. And the code had to be very small and precise uh, in those days. You know, it wasn't like you could waste waste any memory at all. So it had a certain beauty that uh, you know, we, we were doing the best small software. Bill loved to challenge people about, you know, well, you know, I could do that in two days. I could write that in, you know, over the weekend. It kept everybody on their toes. We accomplished things that we probably otherwise would never have figured out we could have done. Kazuhiko Konishi is a lot like Paul and I. That is, he was an independent thinker. He'd seen the microprocessor and what it could do. He and I met and we found that we had a common view that the computer could do amazing things. And he thought we should start working with these Japanese hardware companies because there were many of them. We started without any agreement. And later, we wrote a one-page agreement and sent it over to me and said, I mean, 
I don't give a week and I signed. That was the beginning. The original vision of the company uh, was a slogan, it was a computer on every desk and in every home. And in the mid-1980s, that was still kind of a crazy thing. And we get a lot of pushback from people who would either say, look, there's no way that they'll be on every desk, because pe most business people don't need a computer. And especially they don't need it in the home. That's what we took most grief for, was this idea that, what, a computer in every home? What would you do with it? It went in a very short period of time from insane that everyone would have a computer to, my God, of course everyone needs to have a computer.